Well, as we start, start this discussion today, the main focus, like I was saying before I started this little video, was we're looking to see how the amount you owe starts to get, you know, it's more towards that and less towards interest the more we pay off. So this repayment schedule, it's a chart, but not one for us to calculate things. It's going to show the distribution. I'll break that word down in a minute here, too. Of interest and principal of a loan. So while you're kind of jotting that down, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. So you can go to websites. Um, if you have it, let's say, with a credit card or a mortgage company or something like that, you can always go to these sites and somewhere within your account, they will have this thing called a repayment schedule where you can put in a little bit of information and they will pop up a chart like this one that's on the screen now telling you, okay, you know, when you make your first payment, here's how much that payment is going to go towards reducing how much you owe, the principal, and here's how much of your payment's going to go towards interest that you're paying us for the opportunity to have had this money. And what you notice is, as time goes on, the amount for principal keeps going up, so the amount of money you're actually getting off your bill keeps going up, and the amount of interest that you owe continues to go down, which is a good thing, because we don't want to be paying the interest, we want to get payments done and get it out of our life. So this chart that shows you that for any amount of time is called a repayment schedule. So to calculate it, today we get to keep life simple. Hallelujah. So to find interest for what we're doing today, this is the old one that you will see in Algebra 1 class, Algebra 2 class, and any good financial math class like we have here. Interest is principal times rate times time. How much money did I borrow? At what percent did I borrow it as a decimal? And how long am I borrowing it? Okie dokie, thank you. Now, the only kicker here, and we're going to make note of this, is since we're going to be talking about nothing but monthly payments, Time is normally a year, so for our benefit here, time is going to be 1 12th. 1 12th of a year, one month. So that's one thing we're going to simplify here. But in the principal and rate, we're going to be able to get straight from our chart or our information that we need. So the amount of money that goes to principal, again, the amount of money we still owe, is whatever I make for my monthly payment minus the interest that I pay. That kind of makes sense. If I make a payment and I know how much interest I had to pay, the rest of it all goes towards principal. The rest of it all goes to me paying off my loan, which means the larger the payment I can make, the better off I'm going to be, the faster I'm going to get it done. And so once I know that, the new principal, the new amount that I owe still would be however much my principal was before this payment, so my previous principal. Minus my payment to principal. In other words, hey, how much did I owe at the end of last month? And then I'm going to subtract how much I paid off this month. Real straight, simple math. 
All we're doing mainly is subtraction with a little bit of multiplying to find the interest. And that's really all there is to figuring out a monthly breakdown of an installment loan. So here is a portion, because again, we're not going to get down to zero, as we can see for our balance here. Re the portion of a repayment schedule for an $1,800 loan at 15% yeah, for 12 months. And so they calculated, like we got into yesterday, how to get that monthly payment. And then they break it down into how much is interest, how much is principal, and then at the end, what's my balance going to be? And you'll notice if you're looking at the chart, each time, whatever the amount for principal is, if you take this, subtract that, you get to the new balance. You take this and subtract that, and you get to the new balance. And you start seeing it going down and down and down. But this number is never the same as this one. This one's the same all the time. But this one, as we move on, keeps getting bigger and bigger because I'm owing less and less interest because I owe less and less money. So big part of this is just checking to see if I understand what pieces tell me what. So locate the information, all right? What is the interest? Literally, just looking for the amount here. So let's see here. Locate the information for the third payment, okay? What is the interest? Just want the interest. So that'd be right there, 1898. My payment to principal. Now you're like, okay, now wait a minute, Hardy. Is that what this is? Yes. Payment, sometimes, like it says in this chart, that can be the amount to principal. And then my new principal is just going to be the balance. So you're like, why they got so many words for the same thing? Because that's how these business folk work. They, they like to have lots of words for the same thing. So it might be good to kind of just help out yourself a little bit in case the words change as you're going along. But it's just those three numbers. And so... As we actually get into doing the breakdown and figuring out some of these pieces, it's really just going to be those couple of things we found happening again and again. So, Carla obtained the loan to pay her medical bills for $6,000 at 5% interest for 24 months. The monthly payment is two sixty three twenty three. How much of the first monthly payment is interest? How much is for principal? And what's the new balance? Okay, so first job, figure out the interest. All right, so we got our principal, $6,000. That's what we started with. Times our rate as a decimal. So again, if you're never not sure, take that number, just divide it by 100. times time. Now, remember, this is only for one payment. This isn't for the whole time, so I don't want to do 24. We're going to do 1 12th. And I'm even going to go this far, but I'll put it in parentheses because let me show you something. At least on the calculators we have in here. we got to be careful because if I do 6,000, and don't write this first number I get because I think it's going to be wrong, but we're going to find out. Ooh, we're going to get away with it, I think. Hang on a minute. Oh, we did. Okay. That kind of surprised me. Okay, so my interest, whether I use the parentheses or not. Huh. Oh, yeah, because it go left to right. Okay. It's 25 bucks. So then I move to the next line. And I look back to this. Find the payment to principal. Take your monthly payment minus the interest. Okay. Monthly payment, 263.23 minus interest, which would be 238.23. So I'm just taking my monthly payment, subtracting my first answer. 
see how much is going to my principal, which is still a good amount. And so then my new principal is my old balance, which is my original amount, because I didn't have, I didn't do this before. Minus my payment to principal. So it's not the total payment you subtract, just the principal part. So it's like I keep using the answer from the last problem to subtract every time is what I'm trying to do here. And so if I were asked to do this for a second month, I would repeat this process except the next time, instead of 6,000, I'd use this 57.61.77 there and I'd calculate interest. I'd still take my monthly payment minus whatever that was. And then when I got to this step, it would be this number minus whatever the principal is because your principal keeps shrinking every month because you're paying more of it off. So I have to be careful a little bit because I get down to this next one and it's the same situation with a twist. After Carla makes her 10th payment, she owes 3,572.53. Now we're on to payment number 11. So. There's my beginning balance this time. The math is not going to change. The interest is still the same. The fact that we're doing it for one month is still the same. Let's move this over a little so I can squeeze that in. Oops. I almost gave her a $3,000 discount. I think that she'd have been appreciative of that. So let's see here. $14.89 looks good to me. The monthly payment has not changed, though. That's still $263.23, but the interest is different now. It's less which is nice. So again, when I find my new principle, don't go all the way back to the beginning. Just go back to what you started with problem with. and subtract the amount of principal that you have paid off this past month. And it just keeps shrinking. So again, notice even just within that first year, how the interest went from $25 in the first payment, now it's all the way down to $14.89, and the amount that's going towards her paying off her loan is increasing. So it's not just as simple as, as simple interest every time with this when you're trying to figure it out. That can work in your favor when you make a good payment. It can work against you if you're not making payments. Something to be aware of. So one more, one more kind of twist to add. It's a small one. I won't put you <laughs> going crazy on all of this here. <clears throat> but I do want us to kind of see, ooh, a partial chart. Okay, let's do this. So all the information is still there, like we were doing before. So what we'll do is, oh, where are we going to go? We're just going to go with these first three, and then we're going to we're going to call it good and let you practice on the rest. So find the information, missing information for payment number five. So we're looking for the new principal. So I look, I'm like, okay, let's see, how much did I start with last month? 
So whatever my previous balance was. And then how much did I get to take off the principal? Oh, let's see here. No, wait, what did I do? Oh, oh, Hardy. Oh, Hardy. I gotta be as careful as everybody else. I get my numbers going and then I mix things up. So I get that going. And so then you're like, okay, so that now is gonna roll me into this next area. Find the payment to principal. Well, just like we've done before, I'm gonna take my monthly payment and I'm gonna subtract how much interest I pay. Because again, whatever your payment is minus the interest is gonna let you know how much was paid to the principal. And your principal number should be going up every time. And it is. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. And so my new principal, again, go back to the prior month. And subtract the amount for principal you had this month. And I think I'm actually, once we get this one figured out, I'm not going to keep pounding you away on these because I think you probably are seeing where I'm heading at this point. And we could just keep rolling it out and rolling it out and rolling it out. Oh, I hadn't done interest, had I? But that's... Well, you better do interest. I best do this one last step. I won't do the whole thing. I'm just going to do the one step because we haven't done interest yet back here, even though it's not going to be hard. So interest is going to be my principal, whatever the total is at the end of last month, times my rate. Let's see here. My rate's 9%. Time has not changed. Still doing the 112. So let's see here. Looks like about $26.81 worth. And so if I wanted to now go and finish the rest, I could do the principal and the new principal just like I did in the one before that, and I can just keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it over. So not, not anything that's going to be too bad. So just, again, a little bit of practice. Enough just to get you comfortable for when we down the road see a, a quiz that kind of goes over some of these things. So over here on nine, is the actual practice that we're going to play with here that kind of runs you through some of the same stuff we just did in those examples. I believe, hang on a second here. Yep, I'm right, it's just page nine. It's not a front and backer, it's just a fronter. So doing the schedule, finding the interest and the payments and things like that, just to make sure, again, you're aware of what they are and where they come from. Where are you trying to do those? Sure. Sure.